Welcome to the program, Summit Live. And you know what? With me in the studio tonight to talk about things to do with the kingdom is our dear pastor, Dr. Abidemi Wanto. She is uh, uh, the senior pastor of a church known as Summit Life International. But you know what? We're going to be talking about heavy, heavy stuff. Please get on the telephone and tell a friend or a relative that this program is on right now. I know what she is, a doctor, a proper doctor, not one of those, uh, that, one of those bought on the internet. You know, so it's, you actually studied and you got it. So we yes. need to differentiate because there's a, a lot of guys out there today. They call themselves doctors, but they can't even, they can't even speak a full sentence to save their own life in English. So, so it's great to have you here. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Yemi. How are you and the family? Yeah, we're all good. We're good. Praise God. Yeah. Well, you're looking well. You're looking fresh. We thank God for your life. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tonight we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about who he is, uh, what, what function does he carry out within the body of Christ, and also the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, why do some people speak and why don't others speak? So we're going to be asking those questions from the woman of God tonight, and I'm sure she's ready and waiting to deliver <laughs> to the glory of God. How was your last uh, Summit Life program event? It was good. It was really good. Yeah. You, you called it Ignite. Yeah, the training program, yes. It, yeah. was, it was really good. We had a good time. Um, uh, quite a few of the people who had been coming for, because that was the fifth uh, okay. training day. Um, yeah, it was, I'd been building up and building up and it was a good one, yeah. Praise God. Now let's get on quickly with, with, the, uh, with this bit about the Holy Spirit. Okay. The question, the first question will be, who is he? Because I know the Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe he's a person. Okay. They believe he's an it. So they always refer to him as an it, like a force. Mm. But we know that he is a person. Yeah. So who is he? Well, um, the Holy Spirit is actually the third person of the Godhead. Um, he's the doer. He's the one that um, gives form to the word. You know, we were first introduced to him in Genesis chapter 1. And when the Bible says that in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the Elohim there is plural. Um, and um, uh, verse 2 says that the earth became formless. And then in verse 3, we see where he mentions specifically the Holy Spirit. He said the Spirit of God was hovering over the formless earth. And, uh, you know, so that's the first introduction that we have for the Holy Spirit. And while he was hovering, then God spoke, that is the word came forth. So he was the one that actually gave form to the word. He, he brought the word to come to pass. You know, whatever God spoke, he performed it. So that's the first introduction to the Holy Spirit. And then later on in the Old Testament, we see how um, he came upon people to do special assignments, yeah. especially prophets and kings. Uh, we see the first example of um, Samuel anointing King uh, Saul in First Samuel chapter um, is it First Samuel chapter ten, 10 and verse and verse four, when God told him to go and anoint Saul as as king, and then we also see the example of um, Elijah anointing Jehu as king and anointing Elisha to take his place as a prophet. You know, in First Kings chapter nineteen, so we see there that the Holy Spirit used to come upon special people, especially kings and prophets, to be able to do what God called them to do. And then fast forward to the New Testament, you know, we now see him being the one in charge of kingdom operations here, you know, on the earth. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Well, I need to remind you that uh, if you have any questions to do with the program tonight, send the questions straight through to live at revelationtv.com. And if you want to send a text message, you can send it to the number displayed on the screen. And also to remind that the details for uh, Dr. Abidemi is on the screen as well. So you, if you, you want to take it down to get in touch with her, you can go ahead and do that. Because we don't want you calling the office to ask for the details again. Because we're just too busy in the office to be dealing with mm. you know, things that you could have actually taken down. Amen. Amen. So tell me, what role has the Spirit of God played in the history of 
human uh, mankind and you know human existence mm. and even uh, within the body of Christ well like I said before I mean the Holy Spirit was involved in creation you know um, he was the one that actually fleshed out the word so the Holy Spirit had been involved with humanity in the sense that he was involved in our creation in our coming to being um, so he, we, we, we had that contact with him right from the start you know and then also we found out that you know, um, even after the fall, when man uh, fell and lost the glory of God, he was involved in the, the deliverer coming. You know, um, the Bible says that the word became flesh. We know Jesus used to exist or had been existing as the word of God yeah. from the beginning. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. But the word became flesh and that was by the Holy Spirit. Remember when the angel came to Mary, he said, when Mary asked, how will this be? Saying, I, I know no man. He said, the spirit of the living God will overshadow you. So it was by the Holy Spirit that the word actually became flesh. And not only that, even during the Ezekiel uh, ministry, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So the Holy Spirit was involved in his earthly ministry and even up to the point of him um, uh, redeeming us on the cross. And when he died, the Bible makes us understand that it was the Holy Spirit that actually raised him up from the dead. So our redemption and everything, the Holy Spirit had been involved uh, in the whole process. Praise God. Amen. But how important is he in a believer's life, in the life of a Christian? Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Holy Spirit was only involved in our um, creation, uh, like I said, even after the fall, um, and then after Jesus accomplished all that he, he, he needed to do to redeem our lives from destruction. Yeah. It is the Holy Spirit that actually comes, and it is him that convicts us of guilt with regards to sin. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't have the conviction that will bring us to the Lord Jesus Christ. And once we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, it is he that actually performs that operation of being quickened. The Bible says that we're quickened, you know, so that we become brand new creatures, you know. And from there, you know, we see that it's the Holy Spirit that now comes upon us, you know. Uh, and then after we have been recreated, baptized in the body of Christ, he is the one that comes to empower us. Wonderful. He's the one that comes to empower us. Go on. Okay. And, you know, the other bit I wanted, I wanted to touch is when people give their lives to Christ, mm. they have this assurance mm. in them yeah. that they're truly born again. Yeah. It's not something like, say, well, because I've gone in there and made a confession, mm -hmm. so I'm now a Christian. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what role has, does it play in that? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are actually children of God. That's in Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. You know, when we give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit bears witness with us, that is, he confirms it, that we are indeed children of the living God. When doubts come, when um, the enemy accuses of the brethren, maybe because you have a slip here and there, says, oh, you're not really born again, it is the Holy Spirit that actually bears that witness to say that, yes, indeed, we are children of the living God. You Amen. Know? Mm. God bless you. Mm. Well, again, to remind you, towards the end of the program, I'm going to give you a bit of time to pray over prayer requests. So if you have any prayer requests, anything at all, any, anything you want to be prayed about, send them through to us on live at revelationtv.com. The earlier you do it, the better, because towards the end, there might not be enough time to do so. God bless you. Right, now let's talk, uh, talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We, we know there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes. What are those gifts for? Mm. And why are they given to the believer? Right, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, they're actually, the Bible calls them uh, manifestations of the Spirit of God. They are supernatural manifestations of God. I believe that um, they are given so that we can bring heaven into our earthly situations, to bring God into our earthly situations. And there are nine gifts, like you said, um, three different categories. The first one being the uh, utterance gifts. Is gifts that speak forth. Uh, we have the uh, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. And then you have the power gifts. You've got the gift of faith, you've got the gifts of healings, and then you've got the working of miracle. Yeah. 
And then you also got the revelatory gifts, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discernment of spirit. Now, these are not things that you conjure up in your head. <laughs> you know, these are supernatural things that God uh, uh, enables us to access so that we can bring God into every situation in our lives, in our situations in, 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 in the earth, you know, so that we can access, you know, um, God's divine uh, provision. Amen. Amen. We're now talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There are different school of thoughts out there. <laughs> it depends on where you come, what background you're coming from. Yeah. And the question is, before you, I, I want to just tell us what it is, first of all. Mm -hmm. Then we'll now come and talk about all the other nitty gritties. Okay. Well, basically, like I said before, we're born by the Holy Spirit, okay? He quickens us, you know, and we give our hearts to the Lord. So every believer, every true believer has the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, okay? The Bible says that if you don't have the Spirit of God, then you're not really of His, okay? But what we're talking about is a separate experience uh, you know, after our being born again, where the Holy Spirit actually comes upon us, you know, in a way that is similar to the way he came upon the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit, but then he came upon him again to be able to empower him to fulfill what God sent him here to do. And Jesus said the same to us, that we too need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, by this separate, through this separate experience, you know, so that we can be able to become witnesses of him. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he actually said that you will receive power when that the Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you can be witnesses. I mean, the disciples wanted to go out and start witnessing. He said, no, wait, wait until you are endued with power from on high. You know, so this is, this is the thing. So, I mean, the enemy doesn't want us to have the fullness of what God has in store for us. If he can't stop you from, being get, from getting born again, you, um, the, the next best thing to do is to keep you powerless so that you can't fulfill what, you, what God called, called you to do. So you are in and out, you are up and down, you know, no power in your life. And that's why he brings in all these different arguments, you know, to stop people from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues? Now, this is very, that's very important because it's, it's good to, um, you know, make that very clear. Because when we look at the scriptures, you know, the Bible is a, is a you know, um, uh, is a standard. Yeah. Okay, with anything we're looking at, we need to look at the scriptures. And the Bible is very plain. You know, sometimes we need help to uh, <laughs> misunderstand it. You know, there are five different instances in the Bible where it talks about how people were, you know, baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, we see the first one in uh, Acts chapter 2, which was on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says that when the Holy Spirit came upon them, you know, with the other physical manifestations like the tongues resting upon them, it says they began to speak in an unknown tongue as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so we saw the same thing there. Then go on to Acts chapter 8. We saw the case with the, uh, in Samaria where some believers were filled with the Holy Spirit as well. The Bible says that they spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. utterance. The next one is the case of uh, Paul in Acts chapter 9. The Bible doesn't mention specifically, specifically there that he spoke in tongues. But we see later on uh, in 1 Corinthians that Paul said he prays in tongues more than the Corinthian church. So we can uh, conclude that he actually spoke in tongues. Yeah. We see the case in Cornelius' house. You know, the uh, Jewish believers who were there, the way they were able to identify or to know for certain that the Holy Spirit had come upon them, that the Gentiles had been received, was because they heard them speaking in tongues, you know. And then also in Acts chapter 19, we see the case of the Ephesian church, when Paul, you know, met some Christians and asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And at the end of the day, he ministered to them and they began to speak in tongues. So this is the pattern that we see in the scriptures. And this is very important in the sense that your ability to be able to speak in tongues, a language that you've never learned, is an indication of the power of God that has come upon you. Usually people, it takes people uh, all of their lives still learning one language. Yeah. But when the power of the Holy Spirit comes, you are able to speak a language that you've never, never learned before. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. But then the question, the, the nitty gritty is, why is it mm -hmm. that some do speak in tongues and some don't? 
And there are people out there tonight who are yearning mm -hmm. to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. So which I'm going, I'm going to allow you to pray for them towards okay. the end of the program because okay. you said through laying on of hands, mm -hmm. directly from God, mm -hmm. you know, all the different methods. So why is it that some do speak and some don't? Well, um, there are three things that I, I have come across. There are many more reasons for three uh, important things. I think the first one is really, it's uh, a wrong theology. Okay. When people um, have the theology, which sometimes people create just to be able to accommodate their inability to be able to receive, you know, when they've been hearing all their lives that, oh, um, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues, and there is no biblical evidence for it. So people just believe it, you know, and go ahead, well, I've received the Holy Spirit, I don't have to speak in tongues, you know, but that's contrary to what the scripture says, you know, the examples that we see there, they all spoke in tongues, That's you right. know. Then so, secondly, so it means there is a blockage there. There is something that is actually uh, blocking it. So that theology hinders people. Okay. Also, there's a, the concept, a wrong concept of how to actually receive. Mentors talking about, sometimes there can be hindrances, you know. For instance, like myself, when I <laughs> had the hands laid on me about three times. But the, the problem there was because, uh, <laughs> My understanding of being filled with the Holy Spirit, I took it from the, some branch of, uh, it's a cult really, but it's like they call the same churches. Yes. You know, where when the Spirit comes upon them, you know. There's going to be some vibrations. Some vibrations. And, <laughs> and, and, and screaming and shouting. And shouting. So I was expecting that that's, that's how it's going to happen. Something was going to happen. You know, and nothing happened. <laughs> so even though I felt the presence of the Lord so strong, but... I didn't, I didn't understand. I had a wrong concept <laughs> until, <laughs> until somebody, you know, explained it to me. And then actually, it was the Holy Spirit. I actually, you know, the point when I was able to yield my tongue for the Holy Spirit to flow through me with the tongue was when this word was quickened to me that out of their bellies will flow rivers yes. of living water. And it was like I literally was expecting the rivers to flow out of my belly. <laughs> so I lost, you know, my sense of control you know, of my tongue, basically. So I was able to just yield and began to speak, you know, in tongues. So there's that wrong theology, wrong concept of how to receive. There's also ignorance about the uh, benefits of speaking in tongues. Because you see, when people don't know the benefits of something, they can't really appreciate it. They can't really go for it, you know. But when you know the benefits, then you can go for it. There was a particular conference I went to not too long ago in London. And I met this dear sister. She was into all this spiritual stuff and things. But when I asked about, has she been filled with the Holy Spirit? She said, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, OK, did you have the evidence of speaking in tongues? I said, oh, oh, no, she doesn't believe in that. You know, that's, that's just gibberish and whatever. I mean, I was so taken, so much taken aback in the sense that, you know, so when I started explaining to her, you know, I asked, I said, do you know the benefits of speaking in tongues? I said, there can't be any benefits. It's said that people want to show off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I now, you know, patiently, and I mean patiently, talk, talked her through the different benefits. And so, wow. And you know that right there and then she just got, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. You know, so I mean, the, 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 the um, concept is wrong. They don't know the benefits. You know, if you know the benefits, then it's easy for you to, to desire it. And the other reason might be because there's no hunger. There's no hunger. The Bible says that, you know, on the, on the Sermon on the Mount, that blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for yes. they shall be filled. Yes. Amen. So there's need for that hunger as well to bring about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Mm. So, but, um, you know, I, I've met people. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you hear some people speaking some strange tongues. How are we sure it's not a satanic tongue and it's of God? And this person saying that cannot even discern <laughs> what is real and what's not. And so it's like an excuse mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to excuse themselves from not even speaking in the first place, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. just try and dismiss it. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know that they are shortchanging themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a trick of the enemy, really. The devil knows that when you receive power, yeah. and the Bible says, you know, you become a, a, a terror to him, basically, because uh, he can't just treat you anyhow anymore, you know. Um, so we, we, we know that when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you begin to speak in tongues, you are releasing the power of God, you know. And, uh, you know, one of the main reasons why people say, well, oh, they don't want to uh, speak in tongues, whatever, whatever, you know, apart from not knowing the benefits, 
is because, you know, the enemy is shortchanging them. They have ignorance. They have no clue whatsoever of what uh, the Holy Spirit is there for and the gift of speaking in tongues. Because if they know, they would actually go for it. Right. Mm. Now, for the benefit of people who haven't received the baptism yet, can you reiterate the benefits mm -hmm. of actually speaking in tongues? Okay. Uh, personally, I believe that um, because tongues belongs to this dispensation, okay, we didn't read it. We didn't read about it in the Old Testament. We read about it in the in the New Testament. I believe that it's a kingdom um, uh, thing, the kingdom of God, because Jesus came to establish the kingdom, reestablish the kingdom, and tongues is like the language of the kingdom. We know that every every kingdom has its own language. You know, that uh, uh, helps people to bond, you know, to have a sense of belonging to that kingdom. I mean, we know that, for instance, like um, we have the Commonwealth, you know, uh, where we speak English, you know. So, I mean, everywhere you go and they speak English, you feel you have a sense of belonging, you know. And then you come to a place where they speak another language. It's like you, you feel lost, kind of. So I believe that tongues is uh, actually a, uh, you know, uh, a kingdom language, you know, that when we speak in tongues, we're connecting with that kingdom. We have a sense of belonging, you know. Then not only that, you know, when we speak in tongues, the Bible says that he who speaks in a known tongue speaks directly to God. It's a hotline to the Father, you know. You speak directly, and it's, it's not coming from your brain. It is coming from your heart, your spirit man, the real you, you know. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it actually talks about all these different things about, you know, speaking in tongues. In verse 2, it talks about how he who speaks in unknown tongues does not speak to men, he speaks to God, you know. And then the Bible talks about how when you speak in tongues, you charge yourself up, you know. You charge yourself up like a battery, you know. Each time you speak in tongues, you are charging your battery. You are charging yourself up supernaturally, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a believer. You know, there are other, you know, benefits as well. Uh, you told me to mention okay. some of them. Yeah, you can go ahead and give us, yeah. Because okay. I wanted to really exhaust that, the benefits. Because a lot of people, I, the reason there's that blockage mm -hmm. is because they don't fully understand what the benefits are. Mm -hmm. I remember some years ago, I think it was Pastor Derek Prince. Mm -hmm. He was sharing a situation where he was asleep in the night and the Lord woke him up. And he didn't know what to pray about. He yeah. knew the Lord wanted him to mm -hmm. pray. So mm -hmm. he's just started praying in tongues mm -hmm. until he had a release in his spirit to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then he later discovered that, you know, some weeks later, that that prayer was actually designed to save a missionary wow. who was actually caught in a village somewhere mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. And the villagers were angry that he was converting their people and mm -hmm. they were actually going to kill him. Wow. And that's how that person was rescued. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Those are the sort of benefits you're talking about because sometimes when the Spirit of God wakes you up, mm -hmm. you don't even know what to talk about. Mm -hmm. But the moment you start speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. God, the Spirit of God starts using it mm -hmm. to, do the, to do the damage. That's yeah. why I wanted you to, you know, break it down even further. Right. Okay. Just like you, you said, um, when you speak in tongues, you actually access the wisdom of God. You access the wisdom of God. And when you speak in tongues, you know, in your, in, as a private uh, prayer language. In Romans 8, 26, it talks about sometimes we have this infirmity whereby we don't even know how or what to pray about. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit helps us. So when we yield to the Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit, and it, I feel like praying about this, I don't really know the whole issue, help me to pray about it. And you begin to pray in the Spirit. The Bible says that he who prays, is praying mysteries unto God. So you're praying mysteries around that issue that at first you don't know about. But the Holy Spirit is helping you to break through, to pray through. Then eventually you get to know the reasons. You know, maybe when you buy interpretation, you, you get to know. Um, the Bible talks about how when you pray in tongues, you refresh yourself. Uh, like it says, that out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. And in Psalm 23, it talks about how, you know, it says, you lead me beside the still waters, you restore my soul. So when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're actually refreshing your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion. In fact, actually, there is a, uh, an experiment that was carried out, you know, by some neuroscientists whereby they, um, they, they looked at uh, activities, you know, in somebody's brain when they're praying in tongues. Yeah. 
and they found out that when somebody is praying in tongues, you know, there's a particular area of the brain that they don't normally use for anything else that becomes active. And from that area, two different chemicals are released. Wow. And that these chemicals actually uh, reduce the level of stress. So that just confirms the fact that when you pray in tongues, you know, there's a refreshing that comes, you know, Praise there's God. a refreshing that comes to you when you pray in tongues, you know, and um, there are so many other ones as well. It's like also a foundational gift, you know, when you pray in tongues, it's like the, the first level of entering into the realm of the supernatural. So when you're praying in tongues, you are doing a supernatural, it's not just, you're not just babbling or whatever, you are engaging in a supernatural activity that is powerful, you know, and from there you can proceed to other things. Tongues, interpretation, you can give direction as to what God wants to do. Or Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Now tell me, you know, what do you say to people who say that the dispensation for the tongues and the gifts are all gone? <laughs> well, basically, um, when you read in Acts chapter uh, 2, verse 39, the Bible says that Paul was was talking after the baptism of the, after the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. And it was saying that the gift is for them, for their children, and for their children's children, up to the uttermost parts of everybody that comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And for as long as people are still coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, that Thank word you. is still valid. Wow. That gift is still available until Jesus comes. Praise God. So, Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That's, that's the best verse to actually use to explain it. Yeah. And we know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. Yeah. Praise God. He is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So why do you think the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, for instance, see the Holy Spirit as, a, as an it, as something, as a force, mm -hmm. and, not, and not a person? Um, I've not been a Jehovah's Witness before, <laughs> but <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, there's so many um, con uh, concepts flying about, you know, uh, you know, because they can't, somebody that you can't see, to them is a force, it's just, it's not, it's not a person. But we know that the Holy Spirit is a person. God, you know, has three different personalities and the Holy Spirit is actually one of them. He's a person, he has emotions. The Bible says that we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, a force doesn't have emotions, you know. The Holy Spirit speaks, you know, he, he, he can be grieved. He can be, you know, so many characteristics of a yeah. person that he uh, demonstrates. So that's how you know that he's a person. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Here we have some emails and text messages coming through. Okay. And this person says, uh, Dear Yemi, I'm watching the program right now and I'm blessed by your ministry of teaching. I'm referring to you. You're very clear and totally biblical. A joy to watch. Remain blessed, loving greetings also to Prince, and this is from someone called Sigrid. Oh, right, okay, okay. and to Sigrid. <laughs> and someone here says, uh, I got baptized after I was born again, but I cannot speak in tongues. Am I truly born again? Will I not go to heaven? Let me just, let's just take it one after the other. Okay. So, Am I truly born again by not mm -hmm. speaking in tongues? Uh, the fact that you don't speak in tongues doesn't mean that you're not truly born again. All that means is that you, you probably have not received the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon you with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But that doesn't mean that you're not born again. Okay, and they say, will I not go to heaven when I die? <laughs> <laughs> you will certainly go to heaven so long as you make Jesus the Lord of your life. You will go to heaven. Praise God. Mm. Yeah, because there are a lot of people who tend to link things up. For instance, mm. some would even say, if you don't get baptized by immersion in the water, you haven't completed the whole process. Mm. So maybe you're going to be in a second class kind of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we thank God. Thank God for your life. Amen. And um, I just we know, not, want to give you about a minute or so to just wrap, to just give us a, a, an overview of what you just shared okay. about the Spirit of God before we go into the ministration itself. Okay. The fact that the Holy Spirit um, has been involved in human history from our creation to uh, bringing our Redeemer, um, to convicting us of guilt when it gets to sin, to quickening us when we give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, to empowering us, to um, firing us up. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, that he will, 
He will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That fire purifies us. It sets us ablaze, fills us with passion for God. You know, so he's involved in leading us. You know, uh, he witnesses, confirms that we are children of God. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse uh, 14 that, you know, as many as, that, uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. You know, the Holy Spirit is intricately involved. Now, when you look at, you know, John uh, chapter 14, verse 16 and 16, verse 7, when Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he actually told them that, look, I'm leaving, and it is for your benefit that I'm leaving, so that the Comforter can come. You know, I'm going to send, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send another one like myself to be with you. You know, and the word there, you know, parakletos, simply means that it's going to be our helper, our comforter, you know, our strengthener, our intercessor, you know, everything that we need, our counselor. So the Holy Spirit is to be everything that Jesus was to the disciples when he was here. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be to us, you know, that's what Jesus said. So he is the one that is here for us, you know, as we walk our, our path. And basically, you know, once you're, you're born again, you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. But this separate experience we're talking about is that of being baptized with the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus, baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then in the scriptures, we see the evidence of speaking in tongues, the pattern that we see in the scriptures. And the Bible says that, look, if you, if you uh, earthly fathers, you know, when your children ask you for bread, you don't give them a stone. If they ask you for a fish, don't give them a snake. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So the first thing really is to be in faith, you know, because there's nothing that we receive from God except we're in faith, Amen. you know. In faith, first of all, that it belongs to you. You know, I mentioned before about Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, where Peter was saying that this gift is for you, for your children, and for all those whom the Lord will call. So once you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you qualify. That's the only uh, criterion for you to qualify. And then once you qualify, the next thing is to ask. You know, ask that uh, Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You know, it says, Matthew 7, 7, everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. Him that knocks, the door is open to them. You know, so ask. And then you believe that you receive. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Believe that you receive. And then it will happen. You speak. You open your mouth and let these, the words flow out. The utterance that your spirit gives you flow out from your belly, Amen. from your spirit, not from your head. You know, I think people get caught up in that as well. Yeah. You know, expecting it to be flowing from their head. No, it's not a language you have learned that you have to craft in your brain. No. The Bible actually says that when you're speaking in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. Your mind is silent because it is coming from the real you which is the spirit man. Amen. You know? Wonderful. Amen. And you know, the other problem is that a lot of people, they've been to services where during laying on of hands, someone just explodes, you know, mm -hmm. speaking in tongue, tongues. So they tend to believe that maybe something is going to jumpstart yeah. the situation. <laughs> so they are waiting and nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. And they forget the fact that it's got to come from their innermost being, being. like you just said. Yeah, yeah. Because it's your spirit man that's actually praying when you pray in tongues. The real you is actually communing with God directly, you know, because the real you is like, it's in righteousness like the Lord Jesus Christ, in direct contact with the Lord. So when you pray in tongues, he is accessing God directly through your tongue. You know, one of the, re one of the benefits that I, <laughs> I didn't mention before was the fact that when you pray in tongues, it helps you to bridle your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says that the tongue is a difficult member, you know. To control. You, to control. So when you pray in tongues, you easily control your tongue. Just like somebody cuts you in traffic, you want to <laughs> say something, you know, not so pleasant, just shankra <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you speak in tongues, you can only bless them. You can't curse, so. That's right. It helps you to bridle your tongue. I know there's a scripture in the book of Proverbs that's so interesting to me. Mm. Where the Bible says that even a fool, when he's silent, everybody, everybody thinks he's wise. wise. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So, <laughs> what can you tell us about your program, Ignite? Right, Ignite, um, the, the last one in this series, because it's a six uh, month program, 
uh, is coming up on the 22nd of September. Um, and, um, you know, we've gone through different aspects of what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary, you know, um, who we are, our true identity, you know, how the kingdom operates, you know, discovering our purpose, running with it and fulfilling our purpose. And this last one, we're going to actually go into the practicalities of how to um, really impact our generation, you know. But subsequently, so this is the last one in this series, but subsequently we're, we're, we believe we want to start doing it like a, a weekend uh, program whereby, because we find out that most people, you know, some would come, you know, then for one reason they would not be able to come. And then we've, from feedback that we got, people actually said they prefer for it to be like a weekend program where they can come and just know that that's what they're coming for. And so we can cover the whole thing. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the first one we're going to do next in the coming year is going to be a weekend program. And that way as well, we could move it around, you know, not just in Manchester, because some people who wanted to come from London, they had some issues and so on and so forth. Okay. So we can move it around to different places. So, um, okay, what, what can you share with us about what God has done through the Ignite program itself? Right, through the Ignite program, there are people who I know have attended from the start right up to the end. Um, you know, one thing is very, very clear. They know who they are, you know, with clarity. You know, they know what Christ has done for them. There's a level of boldness that has come in as a result of that. Because if you don't know who you are, then the enemy can just push you around anyhow. They've come to understand what God's purpose and plan is for their lives, you know. And then now they are beginning to make moves to fulfill that purpose, to line up themselves with the will of God and run with the, with the, uh, with the purpose that God has placed upon their lives. So people are really excited Wonderful. about that. Yeah. And where is your church in Manchester and what impact is it having in the local community? Well, with regards to the church, um, we used to meet in uh, a place called, I don't know, you don't know Manchester that much. It used to be in Gorton, but now we meet in the centre of uh, Manchester. So we've more or less moved, you know, okay. from one particular locality to yeah. another one, which is more of a mobile um, community. Uh, so we're just getting ourselves uh, organised and established in that place. Praise but God. We, we're really trusting God. Amen. Um, and you've, you've done some mission work to Africa. Yes. Can you just, you know, for the benefit of viewers who haven't seen you here before, okay. share with us what you did and what God did that surprised you on, one, on those trips? Okay, yeah. Uh, we've done quite a few over the years um, to different places, to Kenya, uh, Malawi in particular. Um, but this, this particular one that we're referring to was the one that we did uh, last year where we had um, medical camps that we ran in different places, you know, for people to come and see uh, doctors, nurses, get medication and so on and so forth, and then be spoken to about the word of God as well, you know, uh, give them food and so on. And uh, on a particular camp, we didn't have, you know, ministers to minister to them, so we decided to um, just pray for people if they needed. And one particular person, and I said to one of the nurses, that if anybody proves positive to a, a cancer screening, that I just wanted to pray for them. And so um, she called me when somebody proved positive and we went to pray, myself and another sister. Um, and then from there, things just started happening. People were getting, you know, delivered and healed. And uh, um, that day, in fact, we had to close the camp because it was getting dark <laughs> and we didn't have light in the place. And I, yes. if I remember correctly, there were at least, you know, close to 50 people, if not more, that were healed, you know. So we were actually surprised ourselves, the way God just turned things around. Praise God. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Amen. Uh, some more emails here. This one says, thank God for tongues. Mm. I agree with all you're saying. Out of my spirit, through the power of his, of his spirit, speaking utterance in the spiritual realm. Power, deliverance, intercession. Amen. Amen. Uh, someone here says, uh, good evening, Pastor Yemi and doctor. I'm sorry if I did not get your name. Please pray for me. I'm being attacked from all directions and I'm finding, finding it hard to pray. God bless you both. And that's from Sister P. 
Mm. Uh, someone here uh, says, uh, hi, my name is Neil from County Kildare in Ireland. Could you say a prayer to the Lord Jesus for my six, soon to be seven year old son, Dithy? That's an Irish name for David. Okay. Please, I'm praying to the Lord for breakthrough with, with David in regards to his speech and ability to talk. Okay. David was diagnosed with autism in 2014. Okay. He stopped talking and interacting with us when he was around two and a half. Mm. I do believe the Lord can restore him. Yes. Could you please pray for my sweet boy? God's okay. kingdom is working through your show. May God bless you all and the show. And this is from my brother, Neil. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I just give you time to pray for them. Yeah. Okay. So, Father, I just want to thank you for Amen. your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are all that we have and you are all that we need. You are more than enough for every need that we could ever come across in our earthly work. So, so right now, Father God, we just want to uh, pray for uh, David. Uh, we lift up that young man unto you, Lord God, and we know that you have a plan for David's life. You sent him here for a purpose. Lord, we ask that in the name of Jesus, David's speech will return to him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we take authority over whatever the enemy is attempting to accomplish in his life. Right now, we shut down every demonic activity that is afflicting him right now in Jesus' name. And we ask that, God, you will give him breakthrough. Amen. Breakthrough, Lord God. You will restore Amen. to him, oh God, his speaking ability. You will restore him to Amen. fullness, to soundness, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. But I also pray for the other person who is going through different kinds of attacks. Lord, we lift up the standard of the Holy Ghost against the onset of the enemy, against his life. And we say in Jesus' name, be made whole, be made free, be delivered right now in Jesus' name. Devil, we command you to lose him and let him go in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to move upon these ones right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd like you also to take this opportunity. Mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of Christians out there. We mm -hmm. get them from time to time. Okay. They come to you and say, I'm really eager mm -hmm. uh, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to pray for people like that who are watching right now. Okay. They want to connect, but they don't know how, and they haven't connected yet. Okay. All right. So um, first of all, you've got to believe that it belongs to you. Jesus came and when he was leaving, he sent the Holy Spirit that you might be endued with power. So it's your right as a child of God. Then secondly, believe that when you ask, you, you, uh, God hears and he answers. And then thirdly, once you asked, you believe that you've received, then you take a step. That is, you act. So right now, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask you to simply ask God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with power, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I want to remind you that in Mark chapter uh, 16, it talks about how they that believe will speak in tongues. So I want you to really believe because you will speak in tongues. So let us pray. So pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you for your promise. I thank you for your promise. That the Holy Spirit will come upon me. That the Holy Spirit will come upon me. When I ask. When I ask. That when I ask you, you will not give me a different spirit. When I ask you, you will not give me a different spirit. So right now, Father. So right now, Father. I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe I have received. I believe I have received. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit. Will give me utterance. Will give me utterance. And I will speak. And I will speak. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, two things. The Holy Spirit will give you utterance. That utterance may come in terms of, in, in, in like words that will just float around in your, in your mind or whatever. 
just open your mouth in faith and begin to speak them. Remember, the utterance is coming from your spirit, not from your head. It is pretty simple. You know, you don't have to be anxious about it. Just open your mouth. You believe it. The Holy Spirit is giving you utterance and just begin to speak it out. And that's the way it works. Pretty simple. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I was going to just give you a bit of time, maybe about, about 10 minutes or so, mm. you to minister to the people, whichever mm -hmm. way the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Because we're going through the prayer request and now also the praying for specific, specifically for people that needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. so I just give you the time now to just flow. And okay. Praise God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, this is your time. We ask you to move upon your people all over the viewing audience, those who are watching now and those who would watch at whatever time they will impact their lives, touch them in a very special way. Let them know that, God, they are loved by you. Let them know that, Lord, you know them. You know them by name. In fact, I really believe that God is speaking to a lady called Julie. And God is saying to you that you feel, you know, uh, God does not remember you. You feel because your family and your friends have abandoned you, you feel God has abandoned you as well. But the Holy Spirit is saying to you that he will never abandon you. He says in his word that even if your mother or your father, you know, will reject you, he will never reject you. Julie, God is saying that he has your name tattooed on his palm. So there's no way he's going to forget you. There's no way he's going to abandon you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Also, I, I, I just sense that um, there are some people who are viewing right now, and somehow you, you've lost all confidence, all confidence in yourself, all confidence in your ability. Even as a child of God, you've lost confidence. But today, the Holy Spirit is wanting to restore that confidence. You know, That's an assignment of the enemy against you, because once you lose your confidence, you can't even operate in faith, which means that your life as a, as a Christian grinds to a halt. But today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, your confidence is being restored. The Bible says that our confidence is not even in ourselves, but in God himself. So your confidence in the Lord will be restored even from this moment in the name of Jesus. No more doubt, no more fear. No more doubt, no more fear. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Jesus. Also, uh, there is a guy called Stephen. Uh, Stephen, you've been wanting God to touch you in a very special way. You've been asking him to actually do something in your life um, that's between you and God. And God is saying to you today that that thing that you've been asking him to do, to touch you in that special way, that he's actually going to do it just to show how much he loves you. He's going to do it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for everything. Amen. And thank God for your life. Because uh, when it comes to talking about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, yeah. a lot of people are very, very ignorant in mm. that area. Yeah. Uh, but I know that normally with the nine gifts of the Spirit, mm -hmm. there's also the nine fruits of the Spirit. That's right, yeah. Because you can manifest the gifts if, if the no fruit, fruit is not there. <laughs> it, it can disqualify you in the presence of all the people. That's so right. can you just quickly touch on the nine fruits of the Spirit, please? Yeah, with the case of the fruit of the Spirit, it's just one, actually, it's just one fruit of the Spirit. But it's an aggregate fruit. It has different aspects yeah. to it, you know. Um, so as far as God is concerned, uh, he's more interested in the fruit I would say, even more than the gift. Because the fruit is what measures how well you're uh, being transformed, yeah. you know, into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible talks about how, you know, his plan and his purpose for us is to be conformed to the image of the Son, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is the fruit that actually indicates that. And that is why, you know, if you are walking with the Holy Spirit, he will continue to work on you manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. 
you know. Uh, no matter how powerful, just like the Bible talks about how, you know, you can have faith that will move mountains, but without love, nothing. you're nothing, you know. So uh, everything has to be put in balance. And God will not allow you to just manifest gifts without the fruit, because at the end of the day, you will just crash, you know, because the fruit is what provides the stability. The fruit is what uh, shows that it is God in you that is operating, not another weird spirit somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to really thank you so much for what you've done now. Amen. I want to encourage you, if you've been touched tonight, and if you're the person that, uh, that's called Stephen, or Julie, or Julie, and God has really touched you tonight, and you believe it's you, we'd like to hear from you. So please take down the details on the screen for the pastor. You can write to the pastor. Or on the other hand, you can write to us here in the studio to share your praise report uh, concerning this matter. So we're looking forward to hearing from you. And everyone else that's been prayed for, maybe concerning some sickness or the other, well, we also look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. Well, thank God for your life, you know. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, people ask this question. Say that, you know, you, you mentioned Julie specifically. How do you hear that the name Julie or hear the name uh, Stephen? Mm. <laughs> well, there, that was the operation of the gift of word of knowledge. Um, everything is by faith, basically. Uh, I, I was determined to press in and, you know, hear from God for the people. And you just get the impression and you just you know, take it and just run with it. Wonderful. Yeah. And I know some men of God, they sometimes say they minister to somebody and they feel a pain in a particular part of the body. Yes, that in, yes. Does yes. that happen to you? Yes, it's happened to me before. There was wow. once we were ministering to a particular lady and uh, at some point we went getting a headway and we're just, you know, seeking the Lord that, you know, God, you know, in your mind, my heart that, you know, God, what's going on, what's going on? I just started feeling one pain in one side of my body, but I didn't pay attention to it because I'm the kind of person, pain, just ignore it kind of stuff. But the thing was, you know, like persistent so much that I'm thinking, and all of a sudden it just clicked that that is a word of knowledge. And as soon as I placed my hand on that part, of that person's body, oh, everything just exploded. All hell broke loose. <laughs> so yes, um, yeah, the Holy Spirit actually, you know, speaks to us. Maybe sometimes you mention somebody and you begin to feel a pain somewhere, you know, it's healing, I see, and you feel a pain, then it might be God actually wanting to heal that particular person Wonderful. in that area, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I have a friend. He could actually see in X-ray form. Wow. He looks at you and he can see X-ray. If there's anything wrong within the system, he can pick it up. Pick it up. Wow. And he also picks up pain. He gets pain in different parts of his body. Mm -hmm. And then he knows there's something wrong in wrong that particular area. Wrong in that particular area, yes, yes. Wow. You know, with the gifts, you know, you um, actually practice the gifts. Yes. You know, one practices and gets better at, at picking them up. You know, subsequently, after that incident that I had, you know, I was all ears looking for any pain in my body when I'm ministering to people. So, I mean, as time goes on, one gets, you know, more, you know, experienced in being able to pick up what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, yeah. one other thing I want to mention is, you know, uh, some people, you know, the Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit distributes the gifts as he uh, wills. You know, some people have restricted themselves to the fact that, okay, maybe it's just uh, prophecy that the Holy Spirit gives me, you know. But personally, I do believe that because the Holy Spirit is the one that operates the different gifts. Yeah. I'm open to all the gifts, and I believe that I can have all the gifts. Yeah. Depending on what this situation is, if the Holy Spirit feels this is the one you want to use, I'm not going to lock him off and say, no, Holy Spirit, I don't want that. That's right. <laughs> you know, so I'm Praise open God. for, yeah. God Praise bless God. you, Amen. because when the Lord Jesus was here, he manifested all the different gifts. Yep. So we should be like him. Yes, that's right. I really want to thank you so much for Amen. being here today. And we're thank looking you. forward to seeing you again pretty soon. Yes. God bless you. Amen. On that note, we want to thank you for being with us. And you know what? Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. Bye for now. <laughs>